So today I thought I'd show you around our suspension clean room. I don't think a lot of bike shops have this, and this is gonna be a bit of a work in progress this winter. So I'm kind of keen to show you guys around, show you what we do here. And if any of you own a similar facility, I'd be really keen to get your feedback on seeing what we can do to make it better. So to start off, we got this uh, custom made stainless steel workshop done by a company in the UK called True Steel. So we got this uh, custom made sink, which just drains oil straight out of the bottom of the forks. And under here we have uh, a big oil drum where we can collect it and we keep all that dirty rags and things like that. So it's dead easy just to recycle all of that oil. And this is so, so useful just because when we're cleaning down, we can just scoop oil into one place. Um, so useful to have a splashback as well. Um, ear defenders, super important. You might wonder why these are here. Every now and then we'll get a rear shock in which is sort of stuck down. Uh, when we do, just in case we put ear defenders on and safety glasses just to be super sure that nothing one's going to get hurt. Um, up here we keep all of the seals that we use most regularly. So we mostly do rock shocks and fox work if I'm completely honest. We do do other brands as well, I'll show you in a second. But keeping all the stuff that we do really regularly just to hand with all the labels facing out is just makes things work for us. All of our sort of easy to grab tools, we like to use Nipex and Weira tools. They seem to work really well for suspension work. They're just like super accurate. And then down here we have all our syringes just so they can just generally seep oil into a plastic container rather than just going all over the place. Nitrile gloves, <laughs> like everywhere. You nearly always have to have your nitrile gloves on. So we have a, a nitrogen tank down here. Um, and you need to get all the regulators sort of set up for working with you know, 400 PSI at least. So we have this little setup here with a tap and a, a regulator. And we have a, a Schrader valve connection on at the moment. This is great for doing rock shocks and um, Fox transfer droppers. But when we're doing Fox uh, rear suspension, we use this little tool here. If you've never seen this, this is how you charge the bottom of a Fox shock and like a little safety catch here. And, Underneath there, if you can see, there's like a hypodermic needle. So that goes into the shock and then you close it off and it all retracts. It's a really neat little tool for uh, doing what's actually quite a fiddly and precise job. So always PTFE tape at hand when we have to switch between the two. But that's all, that's all good. Um, this is what we're going to work on this, this winter. Because this is like all our tools, but it's got a bit messy over the busy summer. Uh, and this needs a massive rework. This is where we tend to keep all the bits of seals and shock bushings, all the stuff that we work on regularly. A couple of Cannondale tools there and hypodermic needles and um, loads and loads and loads of crush washers because we just get through those. And then down here we have um, tools here for doing like the X2s from Fox and the Vivids loads and loads of shaft clamps and bushing tools um, some brass ones there as well and then here is tend to be most of the stuff for forks so we've got a cannondale castle tool and uh, this tool here is actually for doing the new cannondale ochos you need to sort of have a big long tool to get into that these are the bash bolts that we use for the uh, fox really nice to have this almost makes me nervous when you're having to bash the bottom on and actually bash onto threads uh, and a little bit of a luxury is a similar tool for rock shocks as well again I think just working professionally it's nice to have those tools if you're doing this at home this is probably a little bit overkill um, obviously flats flat sockets there for working on the top of forks and then pretty much a uh, Delrin driver for all of our major sizes so 32 35 38 and Right the way up to 40s, we do some of the work on the big downhill forks as well. Uh, in here we keep all like picks and scalpels and magnets, um, torque wrenches. Again, we like using Weira tools. <gasps> There's a tool missing. <gasps> um, high pressure shock pump, this is the one that goes up to 400 PSI. Uh, every now and then we have to do it with uh, you know, a hand pump rather than using the nitrogen. In here is our shock bushing tool. So inside the actual lower leg of the fork, there's actually some bushings that keep everything nice and tight. And these are the tools that you need to sort of remove those. Um, 
it's quite elaborate work. We don't do it that much, that often anymore, if I'm completely honest, but it's nice to have this to be able to solve those sort of problems. And then at the bottom here, I think every workshop has that drawer of various sort of tools. These are really cool. These are like an electronics kit of just really, really fine tweezers when you're working with really small seals. Uh, that's one of the most hand helpful little tool kits we've ever had. Um, again, these sort of scissors here for working on really, really small things as well. Quite handy, like locking scissors. And then in here we have all our stuff for dropper posts. So we have Fox trans transfer sort of tools and this long rod you can see here. This is for uh, nitrogen filling. The, uh, the Fox dropper post and loads of rock shocks, Reba bleed kits and various bits of stuff to clean the inside of tubing with. So yeah, I think you'll agree that's probably needs a little bit of reorganizing this winter. Um, this vice, uh, this is super cool. This is actually the guys that True Steel who made all this had this great idea of making a vice where when we're working with dropper posts or shocks, and oil is going to be seeping down to have like a little tray at the bottom that collects oil. So this is a little setup is, oh, it's so nice to use. And we keep this room completely clean. There's never any cutting of anything in here or cleaning anything. Everything that comes in here is, is just clean. And then over here, big fireproof cabinet and we keep all our oils and what we have, we have all our, RockShox oils up here. RockShox have just changed their oil supplier recently uh, and everything's coming through in slightly different boxes at the moment, but all our Fox oils, Fox transfers, Fox flute, loads and loads of IPA. We, like IPA is um, isopropyl alcohol. We use that for cleaning down everything, just removing any oil and greases and saran butter. And, yeah. and we actually do um, things like Olins as well. So we actually keep all the oils and some of the seal kits for Olin's forks. I'm going to cover that in another another video. Actually, it might be quite interesting. And then micro tools. When you're really working with really really small things, this is absolutely brilliant. You can get little hex sets right down to 0.9. You know, when you're working with some of those really really small grub screws that you see on some of the Fox suspension, this is oh, so nice to have those really nice accurate tools. Like seal kits for days. Oh, these are quite interesting. So these are from ND Tuned. Now, sometimes you don't need to do a complete service, especially if you're riding often in really mucky conditions. You don't always need to change your wiper seals. Um, and if you can get you know, the lower legs off the forks, cleaned out and just replace the foam seals, like every two or three months even, this is a really cost-effective way of just uh, keeping your forks plush and then just replacing the wiper seals a bit more regularly. So it's nice to have that as an option for people who really do trash their kit. Uh, <laughs> microfiber cloths, <laughs> like we get through so many of these, nearly every fork that we do uh, starts with a fresh microfiber, so we know there's not gonna be no contamination of oils or, or anything like that. And then down the bottom here, we have all our, our juice lubes. Uh, and this oil is actually quite good for when we're doing sort of more budget forks with big volumes of oil in like an open bath situation. This is really cost effective oil to, to replace that with. Boxes and boxes <laughs> of syringes. And then, yeah, just we have like boxes of various bits that are broken, but I think one day one customer is gonna be really, really grateful that we have a spare part for, for something. So we just keep various bits and pieces like that. It's uh, and then sort of over on this side, we have our Andrini shock tester. This has been so useful for doing rear shocks because it takes out some of that guesswork or some of the time because you can get a shock into the machine and then you can test all the functions. So this is with the compression fully open, compress that, you can feel the difference and you can just make sure that all the rebound knobs and the compression knobs are all working properly before you then go and inflate it and mount it to a bike. Massive time saver. And then, because all our oily rags, obviously, a bit of a fire hazard, they all go into a big metal bin, which is uh, nice. And then, yeah, this is a bit of a luxury. 
because quite a lot of suspension servicing is just following very, very detailed instructions. So having a, a nice flat screen here with a really good resolution screen that we can see sort of detailed images of instructions uh, is really, really handy. So yeah, um, I hope you kind of enjoyed that. It's, if you've got any ideas about how we can improve our setup this winter, getting ready for the next summer season of, of service work, then yeah, put it in the comments below, anything you think you're missing. And if you found that interesting, again, please put it in the comments and let me know. And if you like this sort of content, please think about subscribing to the channel. Much appreciated. Till next time, take it easy.